inspecting the fire drill, but in the event of the alarm sound in, please leave the building and gather outside on the site. I am advised to inform you that this meeting is being live streamed and recorded. Could I also ask you please to ensure that your mobile phone is switched off in order to those watching live stream know who is speaking, the members and officers to introduce yourselves prior to speaking. Ensure the members of this committee and all points raised by the public speakers are properly heard. I must advise you that I will not tolerate any disruptive behaviour. This meeting is a meeting held in public and not a public meeting. And if such behaviour takes place and exists, I will check the meeting. I will now ask the committee to introduce yourself from the office. Start of the council body, please. Thank you, Chair. I'm Andy Boddington, Councillor for the Lake North. Councillor Nigel Longby from Old Brighton. Councillor Nick Hignan from Lay Valley Ward. Councillor Nigel Harting from Clendervy. Councillor Hilary Luff from Church Stratton and Craven Arms. Councillor Richard Marshall, Warfield Division. Councillor Caroline Bagnall with Brosley. Councillor Ted Clark substituting for today from uh, Basin Hill, determinedly. And Councillor Edward Towers also substituting today for Robert Tindall, uh, Wayne Division. Thank you. Uh, Tim Rogers, Planning and Development Services Manager. Jeff McCormick, Crown Enforcement Officer. Idris Iqbal, Sister. David Evans, Chair of this Committee in Council for Church and in Craven Arms. I can have apologies for absence, please. Yes, Chair, we've had apologies from Councillors Tony Parsons and Robert Tindall. Thank you. And I believe uh, Nigel Arkin is now the new member for Mr. Uh, Richard Hopper, is that correct? Yes, that's right. Thank you, Nigel. Uh, minutes of the last meeting, held on February the 8th, 2020. Is a proposal for the minutes, please? Thank you. Second for that, please. Thank you. All in favour? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Public questions? No public Chair, questions. Chair, could, Thank could, you. could it be noted I wasn't at that meeting, so I haven't voted at all. I okay. Just must count out myself as well. All right, thank you. Yeah. We'll do that. Yes, no problem. Uh, disclose your pecuniary interest, please. Anybody get any pecuniary interest they wish to disclose? Please do your name. No? Nope. Okay. Right, we now go to item number five. Crown Barn, Upton Wake, which could be more to me. Thank you. Um, application at Cleary Mortimer. Um, this is for a 3.3 metre high fence um, in the joining boundary between two properties. Um, if you've got the site, if you can move it forward, move it forward. the site plan, so you can see there it is on the, um, the rear yeah. of um, number one, um, number two to the north west. Um, the application is a retrospective application. And submitted in 2020 and it is our proposal it's already already there um, i'd like to remind members um that the, the applicant has submitted substantial and um, personal documentation and um, suggesting why there's a need for this um, proposal which i fully sympathize with but um personal circumstances do not constitute uh, a material planning consideration and therefore cannot and should not be considered in the decision making process um, so the application has been assessed against the relevant policy 672 in the MPPF. Um, it, in, in regard to its siting, there's no issue. Um, design, again, no issue, and, and wider visual landscape. The greatest concern in regard to the proposal, if you can move on to the next picture, is in regard to its scale and its height. Um, so the, 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 the entire length there, with, um, and you can also just point out here that that um, there's an extension to the rear of one, a ground floor extension with a sloped roof, um, which is why it extends further than number two. And um, moving on to the next one. Um, so the fence, as, as pictured here, is 3.3 metres in height. Um, there is concern naturally with, with height of 3.3 metres of any fence um, in the first instance. Um, the second, in, in regard to the kind of the orientation, the compass orientation of the dwelling. Um, the fence is to the southeast of the neighbouring dwelling, 
and the northwest of the applicant's dwelling, um, which therefore, as a result, means that it is in a primary location for more impact in regard to sunlight and blocking of light and an overshadowing due to the natural sun's uh, movement from east to west. Uh, if, if it means north, it would be in a different matter. Um, the third um, issue in regard to the proposal is regard to its topography of the land. So it's the rear of both of these dwellings. The land slopes downwards towards the rear elevation. Here you, you step out the back door um, and the, the garden goes up. Um, this, this is different for both properties. So the applicant's dwelling, which you, as you can see here, has a shallower gradient before it reaches the high point of the garden, with the neighbour's dwelling having a more steep um, gradient, but the the garden is higher for longer, if, if that makes sense. So for the lot for the part of the length of the fence, it is higher than the land on which the picture is shown. Um, therefore, in consideration of all these these factors in the, in the kind of the compass orientation, the topography of the land, it is considered that the proposed height of 3.3 meters does have a um, harmful neighbour amenity impact in regards to overshadowing and um, a restriction of light namely on the ground floor windows and on the area immediately outside of the back door. As you can see, there is a slight triangle um, where the fence is not um, connecting with the roof of the extension. Um, and this does prevent um, there being, a, a, I would say, a harmful impact on the upper floor windows. Um, but I do not think that that gap is sufficient enough to mitigate the consequences of um, the rest of the fence on the ground floor and the area immediately outside of that. And that is why the recommendation for this application is for refusal. Thank you very much. Thank you. We would like to go for Councillor Arton, please. Can I just ask you a question over the opposite of these, uh, Jeff? Yeah. I was just wondering, I wasn't unfortunately able to go on the site visit this morning. Do you have any photo, photographs of the fence from the, um, the, num the bar number two? Um, I don't, but I believe the, the applicant will do or have some. Okay, thank you. Just right, you know, just I, sorry, Chair, just, just to add to that, that I mean, the, I, I think I wasn't obviously at the site visit this morning. The intention, I think, was to, to was to try and look at the uh, at the fence from the neighbour's side, but I, for, for whatever there. reason, I, no. I understand that wasn't possible. So. No. Uh, yeah, that, that's part of the reason you don't have that mm -hmm. photo because we were yeah. intending that you saw that on the site. Yeah. Right, we're going to someone who can just speak on this now. It's on the app of the, the agent on behalf of the applicant, um, which is going on for us, please. If you'd like to address the committee, we have three minutes to do so. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, my clients have been subjected to verbal and non verbal abuse from their neighbours for the last eight years. The harassment is entirely unprovoked and no explanation can be offered for the neighbours' extreme antisocial behaviour. The abuse occurs daily, often several incidents in one day. The incidents occur whenever my clients want to make use of their rear garden. They are subjected to harassment. Prior to the installation of the fence, the neighbour would regularly stand in her first floor bedroom window, staring and making rude, vile remarks. During 2017, the harassment escalated and became so serious that my clients were compelled to report the ongoing harassment to the police. The abuse, however, continued and towards the end of 2019, a public order offence under Section 4 was recorded. This was in response to behaviour which amounts to threatening, abusive or insulting words or behaviour intended to incite fear or provoke violence. Still, this did not deter the neighbours and the harassment continued. Mediation was suggested and the neighbour refused. In 2020, mirrored glass was installed in the windows at Two Crown Barns. The mirrored glass allows the neighbour to watch my clients covertly. This is yet a further measure to intimidate my clients and make them feel uneasy and uncomfortable in their own home garden. It was in response to the installation of the mirrored glass that my clients decided to install the fence as a measure only to protect their significantly diminished privacy when using their rear garden. The harassment has been lessened by the fence being there. It serves to inhibit views of my client's rear garden from the first floor window. However, the harassment hasn't ceased and a criminal case is now pending. This is not simply a neighbour dispute, it is ongoing unprovoked harassment. 
My client's enjoyment of their house and garden has been significantly adversely impacted upon by the extreme antisocial behaviour employed by their neighbour. It is perverse that, the client, that my client's enjoyment of their garden has been so compromised by the antisocial behaviour of the neighbour that they were compelled to erect a 3.3 metre fence and yet it is the neighbour's amenity that the officers are seeking to protect by recommending the fence for refusal. It is hoped that some weight can be given to the above when considering the appropriateness of this structure within the planning balance. The circumstances are quite exceptional. If the members have reservations about the permanent retention of the fence, they may wish to consider giving a planning permission granted for a limited period. Temporary con consents can be judged on a case-by-case -case basis and there is no presumption that a temporary grant of planning permission will then be granted permanently. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Is there any other to come back, please? Just to say, Chair, that clearly, um, <coughs> whilst sympathetic to the, 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 the difficult relationship that happening with the antisocial behaviour. As Jacob rightly pointed out, um, members shouldn't be given that, that weight as a, as a material consideration. Um, there are other laws that would deal with that issue and it seems as though uh, 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 the, 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 the applicant is, is taking those measures to try and end the, 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 the situation in terms of the harassment. Clearly, we're seeking to preserve the neighbours amenity because it's a planning issue it's a, it requires planning permission and that's what we're, we're considering the fact that the applicant's amenity has been compromised by behaviors which are dealt with separately and under other legislation as i say shouldn't be taken into consideration i note what the uh, the agent for the application has said about um the possibility of granting a, a, a temporary consent and if members minded were minded to go down that route in terms of it being an exceptional circumstance then that is something that you can do uh, and that would be a, a, a more sensible thing than granting a personal permission which are generally frowned upon these days anyway in planning terms but it kind of um, it, it would that would also lead to a kind of a, a, a an, an assessment that there, there was an acceptable behaviours on one, on one party here. So I think a temporary permission, if members were minded to support the application, uh, uh, that a temporary solution would be the way to go. That's a temporary permission, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Can I please? Thanks, Chair. Uh, I think it was our benefit to go and uh, uh, see that site this morning particularly because of the, uh, uh, the situation of the, the two houses. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed to hear that the neighbours refused uh, mediation because I feel that in all cases of neighbourly disputes, if we can go into mediation with a neutral party, I think very often things like this can be avoided. Um, it is difficult because of the topography of the site and without seeing the neighbour's garden, it, it is slightly more difficult to be able to make a judgment on exactly how both uh, parties in this are affected. Um, but I do think, having listened to uh, uh, what Tim Rogers said, that these are probably um, exceptional circumstances. And I'm minded to think that perhaps with a temporary um, allowance for perhaps two years, or something along those lines, it may give time for either mediation to take place or at the very least for uh, some other alternative, perhaps hedging to, uh, to be put in place, which would have at least a couple of years to start to grow up. Uh, one thing I did notice on the site visit this morning was that uh, if we had looked at the uh, properties from the other side of the neighbour's boundary, we'd have what looks to be around about a 20 foot Conover Hedge, which would completely uh, avoid us being able to see anything uh, from that side. And in, in some ways, the fact that the fence is, uh, was it 3.3 metres, uh, it's almost dwarfed by the Conover Hedge on the other side of that neighbour's garden. You can't quite see it on the photograph there. I'm just making the comparison between the two. Although it isn't a direct comparison because this uh, fence is actually adjoining uh, the halfway point of that building. So I'm just making those points at the moment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Marshall, please. 
Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, looking at this, I think everybody in the room will feel a massive amount of sympathy to the residents uh, if the allegations of harassment uh, prove to be uh, accurate. I do think uh, uh, we are a planning committee and our job is to decide on planning policy. Um, the issues that are going on are either a civil or by the sounds of it a criminal matter now and they have to be allowed to do their due course just because we've got a dispute with our neighbour, however significant that dispute is, it doesn't mean that we can then be, be free to build basically a barricade because um, that's what it looks like. Um, you know, I think it goes beyond being a garden fence. So I'm minded to agree with the officers. I'm hearing obviously about the temporary approval of it. My concerns with that is if we say give a year, two years temporary approval, are we not just delaying the inevitable? Um, because I'm sure if one of one or both of the neighbours moved out, the new owners of the properties wouldn't want that fence there. And I do think we're minded, as I say, as the planning committee to judge and assess on planning policy and planning law, not anything else that's going on with the dispute between the neighbours. So I would be in full agreement with the officers that we do uh, refuse a retrospective planning permission on it. Councillor Boddington, please. Thank you. I have a lot of sympathy um, with this situation, having suffered years of harassment from neighbours, uh, eventually got them evicted, which is not easy. Um, and took a lot of 999 calls. Um, but what I appreciate is the impact it has on people's mental health. Uh, and that is quite critical. In this case, I mean, it's horrendous, this fence. Let's make it clear. Um, in one sense, we shouldn't support it. But Tim Rogers has suggested that if we support it for a limited period, it creates space. There is, as we have heard, criminal action going on. Well, we know that anything going through the police, you think might take weeks, actually takes months, possibly years, um, and it's very slow. And I think if we can bend the plan rules, and I think it is bending the plan rules for a short while, then we can give these people some space and maybe one of them will move out, as was suggested earlier. And it would create space for people to settle their differences or just move away from their differences. Um, I think planning in the core strategy and in national planning policy, we talk about making planning work for people and improving their lives. It's the betterment of lives. It's a fundamental goal of planning. And I think in this case, if we could do just to prove um, temporary permission, and I don't quite know the rules on that, but I'm sure Tim will inform us that that, that will help improve the betterment of lives. Thank you, Mr. Tim, please come back. Yeah, so Sorry, uh, yeah, just to say, I, I wasn't suggesting, I wasn't recommending that you go for a temporary permission, just to make that clear. I stand by the recommendation and, and I think the fence is unacceptable in planning terms. What I was saying was uh, there have been suggestions about making, a, 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 making it a personal permission a, 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 or, or something of that nature. And that wouldn't be, the, I don't think, would be advisable in terms of a potential challenge to that. I think uh, if it, well, if mem members were minded to approve, and clearly that's a, a, a decision for you as, as, as the committee, if members were minded to, to approve it, uh, then a temporary permission, I think, would be the, the, the best way all around to, to ensure that it's reconsidered at an appropriate time in the future. Okay, thanks. Councillor Hartin, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Chair. Um, yeah, um, following on from what um, has been talked about in terms of temporary permission, note on uh, 641, it's it covered there within, within the officer's report to the effect that temporary permission should only be applied when the development is considered acceptable in its own right, not on the reason to justify an acceptable development. Um, and although I can I can sympathise a lot with what uh, the personal circumstances are being presented before us, I, I think I tend to be looking at it when it, it is. Um, a significant 
uh, height higher than we would normally allow for, the, for this sort of this sort of uh, development, particularly as the officers have pointed out the uh, wet light falls and so on. Uh, and kind of clearly, the issue of the you know, neighbour dispute is being dealt with by the relevant laws that, that apply there. So I, I think I'm at the moment tending to mind to go with um, Councillor Marshall's uh, view in that the office report is, is balanced, and I think on balance at the moment I'm still in favour of, uh, of uh, that was a recommendation to refuse. Councillor Bagnall, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I found this one a very difficult, difficult case. Um, as Councillor Boddington says, you can't fail um, to have a great deal of sympathy with the applicants. However, um, looking at the, the fence mm. itself, it is something of an eyesore. Um, and it's very unfortunate we weren't able to see from the other side. I think that would have been a very useful thing for us in, in coming to some kind of um, decision. Um, I, I'm inclined with Councillor Bonington to, to um, move towards a temporary approval in the hope that within a couple of years things might have settled down somewhat. Um, but I think I would first like from uh, Tim Rogers reassurance that a temporary commission at the end of the temporary commission, that's that. If, if, if we, you know, if it comes to the end and we don't request it uh, to be um, continued, does it then mean that that fence has to be removed? Come back on that, Tim, please. Yeah, sure. Yeah, the temporary consent means it is it is temporary till it, it, the, te the consent expires at the end of the temporary period, and they and the applicants would need to, or the owners of the property would need to re uh, apply again to either retain the the, the, the fence permanently or to ex or, or for a second temporary consent. Uh, you can, as members, um, uh, if you if you if you went down that route, you can as members ask that that application, any further application to extend the temporary consent, comes back to you as a committee and have that minuted, so that it's not a matter that's delegated to officers. That's something you 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 can you need to think about as as well. But um, yes, the, the the answer to the question is the consent expires, and and and, the, and at the end of the period, the fence no longer has planning permission. Okay, thank you. Good luck, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm really glad I went to the site visit today and saw it. I thought that was really helpful. It is a very large and imposing fence. Um, it was unfortunate we couldn't see the other side, but there is a gap which doesn't show clearly on the photo at the end, which does allow some light in on that corner at the end on the corner. Um, do I, I would be more inclined to go for the two year temporary and then come back to committee um, so as to protect the mental health of the of the people, which I, I know is not really a planning cons something, but perhaps we should be c conscious of, which is why I would support. A uh, I, I think I'd go for a two year temporary. OK, thank you. Go to Clark, please. Thank you, Chair. Sort of point of information, really. I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't make the site visit this morning, but were overtures made or, or, or contacts made with the neighbour to try and um, obtain our, our little troop uh, access to, to, to the other side? Has there, has there been any? I, I didn't make any contact with the neighbour directly to organise. Uh, there's no one. So, so nothing's. No, we we could we could have gone to that. I think I'm comfortable as going around uh, and sit there. So that's why we didn't go around. I'm so sorry. Um, I, 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 did, I asked the I asked the applicant whether we should be comfortable as going around, and the answer was no. Um, and I, I recognise that that might not have been the right decision to make. Or something I may have should have pushed for more. Mm. Um, to make a more balanced and make them be able to make a decision. I, I accept that. Go to Lombard, please. I think of all the semi-detached terraces and now new builds 
that have got upstairs windows overlooking gardens. And I think in this case, because it's um, bigger and more open, they felt that they deserved not to be able to be overlooked in the back gardens, which isn't the way. I think that's an horrendous fence. And what we haven't talked about is the loss of light in the back garden. I should imagine a good proportion of that garden now with the sun sort of 11, 12, 2 o'clock is not usable because it will just be in the dark. And also going into the, uh, the, the downstairs back garden. So I think, I don't think planning should be used for which is a neighbourly dispute, albeit there's criminal offences, and I don't feel able to uh, support a temporary restriction because maybe the person at number two wants to sell. He won't be able to sell if he's got that three and a half metre fence there. So I, 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 I agree with the officers and I won't be supporting a uh, temporary. Go to David, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I also, uh, like my colleague Dan, he wasn't able to make the visit this morning, which we could have done for our engagement because I'm a late substitute. Uh, and looking at this, um, I find myself, I came in looking at the paperwork uh, beforehand, thinking the officer's recommendation was to be followed. Um, but having examined the case and thinking about personalities and life in general, and understanding that we do have planning policies that are to guide us. That is exactly what they are, they're to guide us, not to rule us, because we need to use human wisdom and uh, consideration of the full um, set of circumstances. And I don't know from my cursory reading that the personnel is involved. I, I hear of a case and going to law and the police. Uh, that's an expensive fence, I would think, and I don't know the situation of the individuals who and the, their personal um, amount of money they've got, but uh, they wouldn't pull that up lightly, I don't think. Um, I don't like the size of it. I think it's totally counterproductive, but I'm minded to go to Roger's suggestion, well, no, hint or thought that um, we need to give some space for um, for this to be resolved, uh, and it does need to come back to this committee, and I would go for uh, a temporary allowance. I don't like retrospective anyway, <laughs> so I, I would I would argue that possibly the wisdom would dictate in this one situation that there is allowance made for a temporary um, permission to be given. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Can't you watch it, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I've sat and listened to the debate, and there's a big part of me that actually really wanted me to hear something that made me change my mind on this. Um, there's a couple of points, really. One from Councillor Hignett, when he pointed out about 6.41 in the officer's report, yeah. that does state temporary permission should only be applied where the development is considered acceptable in its own right. I think we could probably all sit here and say that fence is not acceptable in its own right. So really that doesn't give me mind to, to actually uh, vote for temporary permission. And I think as well, Councillor Lumley, he spoke of what if the neighbour decides that he wants to sell the house in two years? Now, if we come back to the neighbourly dispute, um, that would be a great outcome for both parties if one of them decided to sell a move, I'm sure. Now, if I was looking to potentially purchase that property with the barricade or the fence, I mean, I shouldn't call it barricade, um, up, that would put me off purchasing that house. So then if we're talking of human rights and obviously betterment of life, we have to consider that element as well. And it has to be two sided. We can't sit here and determine the rights or wrongs of the accusations. Uh, that's not our job. Our job is to look at planning. And, and whilst my colleague here said that planning is guidance, 
Unfortunately, planning is law as well, and we always have to stay within the laws. Hence, it can go to appeals and we can get overthrown if we haven't used the law correctly, and hence we have a solicitor sitting in the room. So I think that we do have to be governed uh, by the planning, uh, the planning framework that's in place. And as I say, I absolutely think it would be counterproductive to have a temporary uh, uh, approval of it as we stand at the moment. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bollington, please. <coughs> Thank you. No, I don't normally make proposals that I think I might lose. Um, nevertheless, um, I think here that we have an opportunity to protect the quality of life for people, which is a planning objective. And I'm sorry, I don't have the core strategy in MPPF on the screen at the moment because I've lost my internet connection. Um, and so we do have an opportunity to protect the quality of life. We should therefore, my proposal is that we approve this for 24 months and then it comes back to this planning committee. And that's my proposal. Make a strong condition. Uh, well, it must come back. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've heard the debate. Uh, I don't think I'm going to change my mind on this. I, mean, I, I can't honestly see that there is any material reason for us to uh, to approve this. I, I can't see that there is a material reason to, to, to move forward with the temporary permission. The officers have told, them, told us we shouldn't be taking into account the personal circumstances of, of an applicant. Uh, when we look at, look at this in terms of planning policy. And so I, I'm, I'm slightly confused really in terms of if we, if we go for a temporary permission, <coughs> where does that sit within planning policy? I mean, do, what, what part of planning policy box does that tick? Mm. I'm going to go ask the officers that later. Mm. Thank you, Tim. Mm. Well, as I said in, in, in a report, if a, if a proposal does not meet, um, it, Planning policy in its own right, then, then it shouldn't be going to temporary permission. Permission is outlined as this five exam reasons. I can't sign them right now, but there's five reasons of why when they can be applied. And the first of <coughs> is, is is not one of those. Um, so we, we wouldn't be making the decision would not be made on planning policy. It wouldn't meet any planning policy. Yeah, that, yeah just to confirm, I mean we are we are clearly stating in the report that it's our view that it doesn't meet the planning, the relevant planning policies. Um, and, but if, if members um, were to uh, go with uh, Councillor Bollington's motion, I think it's important that it's minuted that it is on exceptional circumstances. And those relate, unfortunately, primarily to the relationship between the neighbours. Um, and potentially, um, it may be unlikely, but potentially, um, if members did approve the fence for a temporary period on that basis then potentially that could be challengeable uh, but i don't know whether the circumstances of the neighbors are such that they would go to those lengths but that i would have to caution you that they potentially is challenging do, do, do you mean you mean by the by the applicant i'm sorry the applicant at the end of the two I, could, could challenge us under, under law if we went for time permission Potentially, they could JR the decision. Potentially, I'm not. I'm not saying that the risk of that is 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 great, or, or but it's 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 it nevertheless is a possibility. Okay, thank you. I just realised that I didn't this week. Thank you. Thank you. I thought my assist members that temporary permission is um, you are able to obtain under the Planning Act. We use the circumstance around the temporary permission. Um, include where like a trial run is needed in order to assess the effects of the development or where in circumstances we expect that the planning circumstances might change so we grant temporary permission to see how it gets on prior to um, moving to a permit permission if the application is made um, but there is no presumption um, that if a temporary grant of permission is issued um, then it will be granted permanently on the that permission. I hope that assists members in relation to when temporary permissions uh, can be used. Thank you. Uh, I just wondered if, as the laid down the edge continued to grow down towards the property, that's living the height of the laid down the edge is now, 
He moved as if the uh, number two decided to sell the property. Perhaps the new people wouldn't like the fence being there. But under today's rules and regulations, if you have a property for sale and there's a dispute between you and your neighbour, that has to go into the particulars. Mm. And also they have to be aware of that. So whether the fence is there or not, if there's a dispute between you and your neighbour, that has to be advertised in the particulars for sale. You cannot get away with it. Um, so as I say, had the lane land edge continued, it would have been higher than the fence. Yes, the fence isn't a pretty sight from the applicant side. But looking at it, the boarding on the other side um, <coughs> works acceptable, but probably we couldn't get around there to look. We couldn't see the lay of the land on the other side, so we don't know how high the fence is. And I would be willing to go along with a temporary permission um, for two years <coughs> so they can all bring themselves together and maybe sort themselves out and um, take it from there. But I now go to Council Marshall and then back to Council Bagnall. Yeah, just one quick question for the officers, really. How did the enforcement ever get involved in this in the first place? I presume, I presume it was reported by the neighbour. I presume, because um, uh, obviously they uh, they're the only ones really directly affected by it. Okay, so the, the the reason for that question then, because obviously Tim, you said that it could be open then for a challenge. If the neighbour's gone to the trouble of potentially reporting it as an enforcement issue, then he may well then be minded to lodge a challenge as well. I would also just point out that the neighbour's um, comments on the application were neutral. There was no outright objection submitted. Um, they requested the, the fence to 2.9. It yeah. was a neutral comment. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just wondered, are we able to defer a decision on this or we're not? We have to. I'm just I'm just thinking if we could defer it for a period of time um, until perhaps after the, the legal arguments have, have ended, then we might avoid having to um, make a temporary permission. I don't. I, I generally don't think deferring the decision helps because a it's retrospective. So you 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 know it's not as though you're going, we're going to be likely to negotiate alterations to the fence that's already in situ. So I don't think uh, deferring it on that basis would would would, would work. Um, and ultimately, we, we're charged with determining planning applications. The uh, the, the, the the council. Um, is in the process of kind of shifting uh, much more in terms of determining applications in a much quicker and more timely manner, be that refusing or approving applications. Uh, and that's certainly the, the, the way that we're, we're, we're kind of being driven. Um, and so I don't think there's, that there's any justification for deferring this application from this committee. I think it, it, it's, it's there. You can make an, an, an assessment and we need to make a decision one way or the other. Um, whether it, and, and it looks by the sound of that, that's either going to be a refusal in accordance with the recommendation or potentially a, a temporary permission. But. OK, thank you. Yes, well, you made the proposal, have you? I made the proposal and, and that was that we approve a temporary permission for 24 months and it comes back to this committee at that time. Okay. I wouldn't detect that proposal from the chair. Have we any other uh, proposals? No? Right, we have a proposal for a temporary permission for 24 months and then that comes back to this committee for a decision after that. Um, so I'll ask you just to take the forwards or against, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, so we have a proposal which is to approve temporary planning permission for 24 months contrary to the officer's recommendation and the subsequent, oh, if the proposal is approved and subsequent permission to come back to committee. Um, Councillor David Evans? For, 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 the, for uh, temporary permission. Caroline Bagnall? For. Andy Boddington? For. Ted Clark? For. Nigel Harting? Yes. Nick Hickenet for Hilary Luff for Nigel Longby against 
Deputy Marshal. Against. Edward Towers. Four. The recommendation for temporary fence has been approved. Thank you. Right, we are going to number six, no item six, which is uh, development land water bay charms in <coughs> Coronation Street Island. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, this is a, a, a planning application for the erection of two detached dwellings on land to the north of the beach arms in, in Hyley. Um, the report uh, before you, I don't think there are any late representations, sorry, in relation to this application. Um, so basically, as I said, the proposal is a full application for, for two dwellings. It's on land which has um, previously been uh, part of the, the land holding to the, the pub. There was once a bowling green uh, uh, to the side and the, and the rear of the pub. Uh, planning permission has previously been granted uh, for four dwellings um, on part of what was, the, what was the bowling green area. Uh, and this application is to use the rest of that, that bowling green and, 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 and kind of open area to the rear of the pub for the two additional dwellings. Um, if I can just take you through the slides quickly. Um, so the, the outline, area outlined in blue on that plan is the plan that is the area that's already built on. And we'll come on, you'll see that on the next slide. And the area in red is the current planning application. The big charms is to the to the south of the of the blue and red area. You can take go on to the next slide, please, Tim. So Bake Charms is the bottom left of, the, of on that plan um, and immediately to the north of that is the, the application site for the two dwellings in question. And you'll see to the to the northeast of, of, of that uh, are the four dwellings in a terrace which were previously approved with parking area in front of those of those properties. The, the two dwellings that are proposed with each as I say, detached four bedroom properties, but uh, and they would uh, each have two parking spaces. The nearest one to the pub has to pay spaces immediately in front of the dwelling, and the, the northernmost uh, property has two parking spaces to the side. Um, you will also note that the, the properties then back onto the road running to the, the uh, along the um, western boundary of the site. Um, I think that, that within the report you'll see that there's been ordinarily you wouldn't like to see properties turn their back on on, on a, a highway and prefer properties to front onto the, onto the highway. I think you will see that that um, it's acknowledged from the, the conservation officer that, that that probably this is the the, the, the only way that these uh, properties could properly be developed in in that manner. So that's not raised as an objection. Neither is the design of, of, the, of the properties or indeed the principle of development in, in, in terms of its location within highly within the settlement of Highland. Um, however, um, as you will have seen from the report, uh, the offices have got concerns about the proposal and those, uh, those concerns are identified in the proposed reasons for refusal. Uh, one of those is that um, it would result in what is the, the, the loss of the last bit of open area available to the public or uh, that, that would have been available to the public house. Uh, and obviously uh, you will have seen, members will have seen for themselves how important in terms of uh, kind of the continue, continued running of, of pubs, uh, out, those outdoor areas have been whilst we've been through the COVID pandemic. So that, 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 that's a concern that they don't have, they, it would leave the pub without any facilities. The applicant um, has um, made uh, within the application has pointed out that that land no longer is, is no longer in the same ownership as the pub. It's already been sold off uh, and it is in the, the, the ownership of the, the people who have developed the land uh, for the four dwelling. To all intents and purposes, that's that is irrelevant because the, 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 the current lawful use of that land is in association with the pub. It's immediately land or bowling, bowling green associated with the public house. 
uh, this application, whilst it's for the development of two dwellings, clearly involves the change of use. It involves the change of use of that land. So in a, if the two dwellings were to be approved, you're approving the change of use of that dwelling, but there's no change of use of that land submitted to date. So the lawful use is as is in association with the with the public act. Um, so officers are concerned that the, the loss of this area would potentially impact the long long term viability of the public house. Uh, and we have policies within uh, our adopted um, planning um, development plan that seek to protect um, uh, pubs and other uh, other other uh, facilities that are uh, uh, essential for the for the community uh, and, and, and a prosperous rural economy. So that's the first reason for refusal. The second or the suggested reason for refusal, the second reason relates to the proximity of the pub to the to the public house, house itself and the potential for uh, noise nuisance arising uh, from uh, the, the pub or people potentially spilling out into what's what's the only open area that's now the car park immediately to the south of the of the properties and, and the, the, the impact of that on the residential amenity of potential occupiers of the dwellings. So um, in terms of the, the planning balance, officers consider that the considerable weight should be given to those two factors, um, particularly the, the, the potential impact on the, the, the viability of the pub in the long term, but added to that the, the potential um, residential amenity or the amenity of potential occupiers of those of those dwellings and, and the, um, the potential for uh, kind of a complaint about that in the future that give that some weight as well and together we um, believe that the weight falls on in the negative and therefore the recommendation is for refusal for the two reasons outlined. Um, didn't run through the rest of the slides, so I'll do that quickly. But obviously, uh, members uh, or some, a lot of you, the members went on the site as it sort of seen the circumstances for themselves on the ground. The design of the dwellings is fairly traditional, um, two-storey, um, with some uh, potentially some accommodation accommodation in the roof space. So, but the, you'll see the eaves it's not un unusually high. Um, if we can move on again, Tim, please. Two properties are, are, are very similar, and again, again I hit, you know, point out that the, as officers we don't have any issue with the design as put forward. If we could move on to please. So there, are, there are some uh, visuals from the the applicants' agents uh, showing the, how the the properties would look in situ. And I think the next slide is the next one that just shows the. Um, uh, extent that the site has in terms of the, the, the potential constraints as you'll see there was some tree cover to the uh, the, the, the north of this of the site uh, I think that, that clearly is from um, an earlier the earlier application potentially because the doesn't it doesn't show the four dwellings on there so apologies for that um, but so that's the um, the application and the recommendation chair but obviously happy to take questions from members thank you thank you Jim and I'm going to speak on this, Mr. Joe Salt. Uh, you're speaking as the agent for the application. You have three minutes to address the committee, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, all. Um, I'm Joe Salt from Base Architects. I'm here to support, uh, speak on that of the, uh, the applicant and support the application. There's just a few, um, uh, actually, small omissions and additional information that I just wanted to make the members aware of. Uh, firstly, um, as, as I'm sure we are all aware, the land is categorically not part of the pub's immunity space anymore. It was previously, uh, but and it was in, in the not too distant past, but it's not now. This is uh, fundamental because granting planning permission for the proposal will not be causing what the officers term the erosion of a community facility. Public House sold off the application site uh, to cover the uh, economic impact of the global pandemic. And the proceeds of, uh, of the sale are dependent on, on planning permission being granted, so I'm very much not being dramatic when I say that refusing permission would put uh, the immediate viability of the public house in danger. In short, the pub 
well, there's a good chance it may have to close, yeah. and that would really be the loss of a, a community facility or asset. This has been explained to officers uh, on a couple of occasions. Moving to the, um, the second reason, uh, whilst it was certainly a consideration that noise, a potential noise and disturbance uh, will impact from the public house, um, that could affect the potential occupiers, a quick check uh, has discovered that there haven't been any noise complaints in the past 12 years. Furthermore, anyone exiting the pub late at night won't be walking directly past the um, proposal because they don't front onto the uh, onto the high street. And it's also telling that the council's re regulatory services have not raised this as a formal objection on noise grounds, as it, it's quite clear that it's not an issue that would be strong enough to form a, an individual reason for refusal. However, the applicant is happy um, as part of any approval to have a pre-commencement condition put on it for any uh, noise for a noise survey that would inform the specification of the windows, doors, and external walls through their recommendations. Uh, if it would allay the concerns of the members. Uh, we would also point out that the application that was granted for the four houses at the back to the, to the northeast of the site uh, did not come up against the same objections that this one did. And that did very much include the loss of community land that was very much being used as part of the pub at the time of the application. So there's a, an inconsistency in the approach that the officers have taken, which ultimately, if the proposal is not granted, could have serious implications if officers are serious about preserving this community asset. Uh, I would implore the members to, to grant permission for the scheme. It's supported by um, many stakeholders. Uh, it would result in significant social and economic benefits to the area and the pub. And uh, tellingly, there hasn't been any neighbour objections during the application. The primary concern raised uh, by the officers is, a, is an important one that being the loss of uh, the immunity space. May I finish? Thank you, sorry, I will keep it quick. Um, however, this immunity space is no longer there to be lost. I understand the lawful use of it, but it can't be actually used despite what the lawful use is. Uh, it's a plot in the centre of Hiley. It's, a, it's for all intents and purposes, a, a absolutely brilliant development plot and the two houses sit very comfortable within it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Sorry, Chair. I think it's, it's, it's important that I, that I say something because the, the agent uh, in speaking there, I think, has said that the the sale is dependent on the granting of planning permission, the sale of this land, which suggests that it isn't. It's, cur it's currently still owned by the pub until the, the sale goes through. So I, 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 I'm sure the chair will come back for clarification on that, but that's, that's uh, important. The other thing that was said was um, that, um, that the same objections weren't raised to the proposal for the four dwellings. Um, well, of course, at that point, it wasn't taking up the whole of the land that had previously been associated with the pub. There was still the, the, an area that could be retained in, uh, immediately to the north of the pub and used in association with the pub. So the, 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 the reason that, you know, uh, the, the, the justification for, for saying that um, in it, that we're taking a, 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 a different approach or uh, is, 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 I think, a bit misguided, mm. uh, if I'm honest. And obviously, um, the other things to bear in mind is that though, though the four dwellings that have been developed there formed land that was associated with the pub, there would have been a sale and a, and a, and a receipt from the sale of that land and the development of that land. Uh, and potentially, uh, uh, which wouldn't have been unsubstantial, and that could could have been used, obviously, to to help maintain the long term viability of the pub. So I, I, th I think it was just important that I, I made those points. I'm happy for you to clarify that with the the agent chair. Thank you. Do you want to come back on that, sir? Yes, thank you, chair. Um, so no, the, the, it's not dependent. The, the sale isn't dependent on the granting of permission. It has already been sold. You obviously remember saw it's all fenced off. It's, uh, there's been a, a fee been paid for the sale. There was also there's overage and other deal agreements that are dependent on how many units and what type of units get there. But really, to be absolutely clear, it is in a different ownership to the ownership of the public. Thank you for that, sir. Right. Okay, can I love first? Thank you, Chair. Um, can I just get some clarification from the officers, please, about the lawful use of land? 
Um, if it's now, if the land is now owned by other people who don't, can they stop the pub from using it? As it's an amen, as you're saying, it's 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 registered as an amenities. So could they just say, well, you can't use it anyway anymore? Or no, it, it's it's not registered as an, an amenity. It, it, it's lawful use in planning terms is land associated with the, the Bay Charms, with the pub. There hasn't been a, a change of use, um, uh, uh, planning a, a planning approval for a change of use of that land. So that's its lawful use. But of course, yes, the people, if it's currently owned by somebody, somebody separately, they can prevent it being used in association with the pub. Okay, because when we went today, they have got chairs and tables out as if it is still being used for the pub but i just wanted to check that you know so it could become apparent you know if the, if the owners the new owners decided they could sort of fence it off and stop anyone going on there and it could just then become barren it could it, but it couldn't be used for anything else without okay. going first off chamber yeah thank you <coughs> Can I yeah, thank you. I remember, I remember actually, I, I remember the previous application that uh, came forward for uh, for the other side, and I, I think the officers are quite correct. I think the, the reason that that I, I seem to remember um, went through was that um, there still remains sufficient immediate land for the, for the pub still to operate effectively. And my concern is that uh, this is, from reading the officers' report, seems to be the only pub in the centre of the, the community here, which is quite a significantly large community. And, and, and I'm, I'm concerned that um, this, I mean, the, the soft and if this were to be developed as housing, it's going to um, severely damage the, the, the long term viability of the pub, whether it's in this area or, or another area. Uh, and, and as such, um, I, I think the officers are quite correct in, in, in recommending refusal. I think this, this needs to be kept as amenity land. Um, and at, at some point, you know, whether this particular owner, if this particular owner of the land can't get the permission that they're, they're seeking, uh, for, for homes, it could always be sold to another owner, another owner who, who would potentially then uh, continue to use it as immunity land as it's currently set out to be. And so I'm quite happy to, to move the officer's recommendations for refusal. Thank you, Nigel. Councillor Harding. Uh, Councillor Marshall, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm just a tad confused here um, with the way that the agent speaks in oxymoron. In his original opening gambit, he stated that uh, the pub potentially is at severe risk. Uh, being lost forever as a public amenity if the planning application wasn't passed. When pressed on that by uh, Tim Rogers, the officer who was correcting it, he said, no, the sale has gone through. So if the sale has gone through, there is money there for the pub anyway. And I think we're possibly tugging at a little bit of heartstrings there uh, on the fact that that public amenity, i.e. the pub, would be lost. So therefore, I'm prepared to second the motion that we go with the officers and refuse the application. Thank you, Captain Marshall. Captain Clark, please. Point of clarification, I think, or just a point of needing to go to the opposition. I'm trying to find down here, I seem to recollect, perhaps the officers are confirmed, I'll tell me to get back in my box, that there was some sort of a, a landscaping scheme that was uh, one of the conditions of of the original development opposite. My misreading, there is some sort of a landscape scheme that was, I got the impression it was from the uh, previous development. We'll, we'll, well, we'll, we'll kind of look that up if, if you... Uh, okay, please. Can I Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm happy to fill in the space here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I do have some concerns about this. I mean, it is loss of immunity land, whatever uh, anybody else thinks. Uh, it's a change of use. My main concern is it's too close to the public house. Um, when I looked at the site this morning, there was a boundary wall just outside the bay windows of the public house, and the public house frontage to me seems to not face the road, seems to face directly onto the land that is being proposed for development. Now, if that boundary, and it's shown on the map there in front of us, is half a metre away from the public house, if they put a, let, let's say, a, a fence that's allowed, so uh, a six foot six fence, from the <laughs> three inches there, uh, those bay windows are going to be virtually blanked. And uh, somebody was looking out of one of those bay windows this morning when we were there on site. And I, I think a, a fence, a garden fence even, or a hedge or whatever, is going to be put there for the boundary. 
literally half a meter away from the Woods Bay window. It's just going to completely ruin the outcome of anybody that wants to stand in that part of the moment. They're looking out across, across open ground. So I think that is a, is a big concern of mine. Mm -hmm. And just finally, one question for officers. Uh, if this didn't go ahead and that land has been sold into private ownership, could I ask officers to confirm where the access to that land is at present? Because we walked across the pub car park and through a, a wooden gate. So if this was not accepted, the person who's bought that land, how did they access it? From the um, they, they must have negotiated a right of way through the pub car park. Right here. Thank you. Chair, yeah, sorry to butt in, but I got yeah. yeah, uh, uh, I think uh, Mr. Rogers and his colleague were, were frantically going through things. I think, although my eyes are still squiffy, 6.6.3 .6 was what I was referring to, the, the um, paragraph in there, which suggests that, um, unless it's me, suggests there is, a, is some sort of a, a planting um, arrangement on that, this site, which is which is part of the original application, which I think adds the confusion. Okay. Six point six point three. Yeah. To the bottom of it. The the um plan that was approved for on the it was under reserve matters for the for the, um, the the four unit just showed this land as being retained as existing beer garden with one tree to be removed and a cypress tree to be retained there wasn't any kind of additional planting shown on that okay Anyone else wish to speak, please? Because we do have a proposal on the table and a second for refusal uh, with the operator's recommendations. Okay, you happy with that, Tim? Yep. Okay, I'd like to take the vote, please, Idris. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, could you please confirm whether you are for or against um, the proposal, which is um, to go with officer's recommendation to refuse the um, motion? Um, David Evans? For. Caroline Bagnall? Four. Andy Bobby Boddington? Four. Ted Clark? Four. Nigel Harting? Four. Nick Hignett? Four. Hilary Love? Four. Nigel Lumby? Four. Richard Marshall? Four. Edward Towers? Four. Thank you, that's Karen, as you know, it's for uh, review. Thank you. We go to item seven, which is a list of appeals. Tim, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I didn't. Uh, I wasn't intending to to run through these um, appeals. Well, firstly, I would, at this point, there was something I've said, I've mentioned to a couple of the members previous to the, me the, the meeting. I'm just conscious that the last meeting that we had was a huge agenda that went on <laughs> till the early hours of the morning, it felt like. And then we, this, this time we've got a very small agenda. We wouldn't normally run a, a, a committee with, with two items. There were originally more to schedule to be here, but the reason I've run with, the, with this when it's been reduced to two is I didn't want to cancel this meeting, carry these two forward, and then find that we ended up with a huge agenda next time. It, it, I'm hoping that it's going to balance it out, itself out soon uh, and that we do get to, to manageable agenda. Ideal numbers are around six or seven uh, for, a, for, a, for a meaningful meeting. So I, I, I just wanted to apologise that this agenda was quite short. Nevertheless, there were small applications but generated quite a bit of debate, which is, which is good. Um, and then uh, the other thing, yeah, I just wanted to say about one of the appeal decisions, uh, as you will see, most of the appeals have been dismissed, so the council have been successful in most of those. The, the one appeal that was allowed was an appeal against uh, an enforcement notice that the council served, and it relates to some land to the north or, or, or adjacent to the cricket ground at Cal Clavel. Um And what's happened there is that the um, uh, the owners of that property have bought it and have, have said they're going to run it as a small holding and they've done quite a lot of physical work and, and made a couple of planning applications for work to, to do on the land there um, but they've built and 
done works that isn't in accordance with the planning permission or doesn't have planning consent. Uh, and therefore we and they've also, in our opinion, started to use the land for um, a contracting business that they run, which wasn't, wasn't part of what they said they're intending to use it for and it's lawful use, which is agriculture. So we actually served two enforcement notices, one against an authorised change of use, one against unauthorised operational development. For reasons best known to themselves or, or of an oversight, the, the, the owners only appealed against the change of use. So that appeal decision that you see there is, a, is an appeal against the enforcement notice that we served in respect of the change of use, which was dif more difficult to prove to an inspector. And unfortunately, inspectors said that, that um, quashed the, the enforcement notice and said he doesn't believe there's a change of use actually taking place there. Nonetheless, they did not appeal the operational development um, enforcement notice. We are very concerned about the unauthorised development that they carried out there. And because they haven't appealed that, we can now enforce that and we can now prosecute for non-compliance with that enforcement. Yes. So that's what we will be doing. And that reflects back to conversation I was having with the councillor Towers about we are, as a council, taking starting to do a lot more formal enforcement action. And hopefully the message will get out there quickly that, that yeah. we do. We are starting to take action and, and show our teeth perhaps a lot more than we have done in the past. Okay. That was it. Can you come back, Andy? If I may, and on one of the one of the other appeals, Council View Terrace in Ludlow, and the officers put up a very good defence, having rejected it, and the planning inspector was absolutely clear, no, uh, it, it was a very clear no. Uh, the committee is the committee is now in negotiations with Shropshire Homes to transfer the land to the community. We are not at a position where we can talk about it publicly, um, but we believe we can get the land on the same basis that Sydney Road Green, another green area in Buffalo, which was to be got the planning permission on appeal before bungalows, is okay. going to be transferred in the next few weeks to the town council for one pound as a town green. And we hope that Castleview Meadow will be transferred on the same basis. Cover Town Green, nobody can develop it, so it's worthless. Uh, and therefore, I mean, we're prepared to offer her, if it's not to be limited, we are prepared to offer 150,000 for it, which we have cash in hand. Um, but we prefer, we much prefer to pay one pound. We are being broadcast, aren't we, at the moment? I yeah. hope that uh, um, Councillor Waddington was properly aware of that. So it, it could be across the entire nation in the next time. <laughs> Thank you. I, I would, it's one of those leaks that I was happy to make. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'd just like to thank the officers for all their hard work today and their excellent reports. Thank you. This will be enough for this Thank all those attended the segment this morning. We had a good marathon run. We got ourselves back uh, late, but there we go. When the road was closed and we had to take tours and everything else. Not true. Uh, no. I'd like to say the substitute was sending a short notice. Very much appreciated. The next meeting is April the 5th. That's on a Tuesday. I wish you all a safe journey home. Thank you. Thank you, we agree, don't we? We agree, don't we?